Hi everyone. Welcome back from spring break. Feeling pretty good. Spent a lot of my time outside doing some yard work and riding my bike and um, taking lots of walks. Hope you got to do the same. Now we're ready to get back to business. All about Sam is continuing with um, today's adventure. Last time we were together, Sam was um, really scared. He was in his new house for the first time, and it was a lot different than his old apartment. It was a lot bigger, and he didn't feel comfortable yet. So we saw that Anastasia was getting ready to help him feel better. She reminded him about his trucks, and he started to have positive thoughts and positive feelings. Something else that gives us positive feelings is our joke of the day. So our joke starts with a question. Why are fish so smart? Well, because they live in schools. <laughs> Boys and girls, also keeping it positive with today's affirmation, I am prepared to succeed. One way to help yourself feel successful is to make a list each day of what you'd like to accomplish and try and check things off as the day goes by. It'll make you feel successful. I do have some birthday shout outs today to some of our students who had birthdays during our spring break week. Jaden Hernandez Mitchell, happy birthday to you in Mrs. Fisher's class, third grade. Messiah King in Ms. Cheruli's kindergarten class, happy birthday. Hi, Madison Ford, happy birthday to you in Mrs. Lick's kindergarten. It's Erwin Batista's birthday week, last week in Mrs. Jensen's third grade. Happy birthday to Marco Bolina in Mr. Taylor's second grade. And one more birthday shout out to Alexander Marino Cruz in Mrs. Lick's kindergarten class. We also do want to start out each of our time together with taking a nice deep breath to help clear the cortisol out of that prefrontal cortex so we can think clearly. We're going to do some alligator breathing this week. If you remember, Alligator breathing starts with both your hands together with a deep breath in. Flip your hands over. And one more. Add in some shoulder rolls to loosen up your neck and shoulders from working so hard. And then you're ready to get started. One word I want to focus on in today's reading is puzzled. See if you can listen for the word puzzled and who might be feeling puzzled. And think of another word that we can use in place of the word puzzled. Anastasia set up a cardboard garage in the big blue bedroom down the hall. Then she and Sam and Mrs. Krupnik all got onto their hands and knees they all said as they began pushing the trucks across the bare floors and down the long hall. Sam's father came up the stairs and stood there watching. You can do the fire engine if you want, Dad, Sam said. So Dr. Krupnik got on his hands and knees and made a siren noise as he pushed the red fire engine slowly down the hall. A moving man came up to the top of the stairs and watched wiping sweat from his forehead as Dr. Krupnik and his family crawled in a little line down the hallway floor. Can I do one? The moving man asked. Take the dump truck, Sam directed, and the moving man began to crawl and say, Rrr, also. Another moving man came up the stairs, looked, laughed, and then got down on his hands and knees with the police rescue vehicle. Now the third moving man appeared, looking puzzled. He had a can of Pepsi in his hand and he stared at them for a moment and then he shrugged, put the Pepsi down on the top step and got himself a truck. He chose the big gray steam shovel and he made a clankety clank sound as he drove it down the hall at the end of the procession. There were seven people now crawling slowly down the hall, pushing trucks and making engine and siren noises. Finally, they were all in Sam's big new bedroom. Sam, his mom, his dad, Anastasia, and the three moving men sitting on the floor surrounded by trucks. 
Well, said one of the moving men, the one with the tattoo of the dragon. Next time, we'll set up your bed, Sam. Right here against the wall be okay? Sam looked at the wall where the man was pointing. A few minutes ago, the room had looked scary. It had looked too big and too empty and too far away from all the people in his family. But now, all of a sudden, it looked okay. Now his trucks were lining up on the floor, waiting to drive into the cardboard box garage. Now there was another unopened box under the window, and he knew what was in there, his blocks. Soon, they would bring up his bookcase and the box that held all of the books to put on the shelves. Sam nodded. Okay, he said to the moving man with the dragon, you can put my bed right there. The three moving men got to their feet and headed for the stairs. It's not a crib, Sam called after them, just in case they might have the wrong idea and might think he was still a baby. It's a bed, a real one. Boys and girls, what made Sam feel more comfortable? His positive thoughts being surrounded by people who cared about him. I do have one rare picture to share with you, but I know you are imagining most of what was happening in your brain. Think back. Can you close your eyes and picture them crawling down the hallway? They may not have looked quite like this, but this gives you an idea of what the author was thinking, Lois Lowry, when she was writing the story. So oh, you heard the word puzzled. Who was it that was puzzled? Remember, one of the moving men. What made him puzzled or confused? Probably wondering why everybody was crawling on the floor, but he got down to it too. I hope you enjoyed today's All About Sam. Tomorrow, come back and join us again when Sam finds out he's going to get ready to go to nursery school. Nursery school? What does that mean to Sam? Wait till you find out. He thinks he's going to be getting shots when he gets to nursery school. See you next time.